bring out the corpse. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the world's premier organ harvesting auction. We've got our dead body, so let's get started with the bidding. If we were to take this specimen right here and cut it up with perfect efficiency, not letting anything go to waste, and selling it all at the top market price we could find, we would be looking at a cool $45 million. It's a nice little payday for our auction house, so let's hurry up and get started before it all starts to spoil. Why don't we kick things off with the fifth most valuable organ in the human body? And wouldn't you know it's actually the largest solid internal organ in the body, that is, internal organ. We all know the skin is actually the largest organ. With four lobes, 32 sections, and thousands of lobules, we just wanted to say that word in a video, it's wobbly, it's tasty in a pie but pretty gross when you think about it, it's the liver. Don't you hate it when you get poisoned? So do we. That's why you need a brand new liver. It's capable of filtering all manner of harmful toxic substances from your body, but that's not all. The liver actually performs over 500 functions in the human body. If you've eaten a ton of sugar and have plenty of excess glucose pumping through your bloodstream, the liver can grab all that extra glucose and turn it into glycogen. This means that your liver can now store that energy for later. Feeling a bit low on juice later on? Your liver will break that glycogen back down and feed it back to you. How sweet! Of course, you probably know the liver's role best from all the people who have destroyed theirs. Alcohol is not good for your body, it's actually a low-level poison. So, while you're partying and having a great time, your liver is working overtime, doing its best to keep you alive and healthy. Overwhelm it with too much alcohol in one go and your liver can't keep up, leading to alcohol poisoning. Sustained heavy drinking over a number of years will steadily destroy your liver too. If you have an awful tattoo that you want to have removed, like the one on your neck that was meant to say no regrets but was misspelled as no ragrets, you've got to get it lasered. The high energy laser beam breaks the ink down into tiny fragments, which are then absorbed into the bloodstream. Where do they end up? Say it with us, one, two, three, the liver. But you probably didn't know that this can permanently stain your liver as not all of the ink is passed from your body. Thankfully, this body right here is as pristine as it gets, never a drop of alcohol, and never been anywhere near a tattoo artist's needle. Let's start the bidding. Can I get 50, 55, 70, 100, 150, 155, 157? $157,000 sold to the tattooed man in the front row. Let's cut that sloppy red lump out of our body and give it to him right now. Disgusting. Moving swiftly on from that mess, let's tear out the fourth most valuable organ. This little fella might be small, but it accounts for 75% of all organ transplants in the world. That's some high demand right there. And luckily for us, each body comes with two. That's right, folks. It's the kidneys. Pumping more than 50 gallons of blood per day, that's a large bathtub and then some. Much like the liver, they filter your blood, removing waste and excess chemicals. Been drinking too much water? Kidneys. Too much uric acid from eating and drinking all day? Kidneys. Too much salt from playing League of Legends all day? Therapy, but also kidneys. They do regulate your salt levels. If our cadaver over here was still alive, we could rip one of those bad boys out and they'd still live a happy and healthy life with the right treatments. Maybe a good side hustle for a bit of income instead of starting a podcast. Rip that second one out and they'll develop uremia. Toxins steadily build up in their bloodstream which are no longer being removed from their body and expelled as urine. It could take a few days, it could take a few weeks, but they would lose their appetite, sleep most of the day, suffer from severe confusion, change their skin color, and even have visions of people who aren't there. The body slowly poisons itself from the inside and they die. So it's a good thing our dead guy is already dead. The reason everyone loves kidneys so much is because they help with some of the most prevalent health conditions in the world. Diabetes, high blood pressure, and other heart problems can all be exacerbated by poorly functioning kidneys. Slap one of those shiny new ones in and you could have yourself a whole new lease on life. Just make sure your body doesn't reject it or you'll be clinging to a dialysis machine for dear life as your immune system does its best to destroy your new organ. But don't worry, only a tiny, tiny percentage of people experience organ rejection with kidneys. Only 10 to 15 percent in the first year. You'll be just fine. We know it's higher than the liver, so who wants to start the bidding at 157? Can I get 170, 185, 195, 200? Sold for $200,000 to the woman in a League of Legends t-shirt in the third row. With all items in this auction, their price can vary wildly depending on the quality you're buying. And for our next organ, that is especially true. If you're a smoker, bad luck, your set of lungs will only go for about $40,000. That's right, we're talking about everyone's favorite air sacs, the lungs. 
Which lung is your favorite, the left or the right? Do you think that's a trick question? Because they're both the same? You're wrong! The left lung is actually smaller because it needs to make space for the heart. It also only has two lobes, while the right lung has three. But we're selling them as a set, so there's no need to take sides. You think one in a bit of a bath full of blood was a lot? Well, how big does a concrete mixing truck sound? The volume in the mixer, about 11,000 liters, is how much air you cycle through your lungs in a day. Think that doesn't sound like much? That's 13 pints per minute, and much like the kidneys, you can survive with just one of these bad boys. We'll pick the right one personally, but it's totally your choice. We won't flatten this pair out right here, but if you did, opening up all the individual sacs or alveoli and stretching them flat, they would be the same size as a tennis court. Throw them in a tank of water and they'll float, the only organ in your body that would. It's safe to say that you'll want a good pair of these in your chest when you hit the pool, or you'll sink, like a stone. And you'll want some of these if you're spending a lot of time in the pool because they're key to losing weight. When your body fat breaks down to release energy, it releases two main waste products. One is water, which your body expels as sweat or urine, but the other is carbon dioxide, which of course you breathe out. But what's really crazy is the ratio. You think most of the weight would be lost through water, but roughly 84% of it comes out through your breath. But it's not just your fat that you breathe out. Every carbohydrate that you consume is broken down into water and CO2. It's even the same with alcohol. Your lungs are a really efficient way for your body to remove waste products from your body. So, next time someone stands a bit too close and you catch a whiff of their bad breath, just remember it's not only stale coffee, it's also fat, last night's beer, and the slightly undercooked chicken breast they decided to risk it with last night. Much better. Who's starting the bidding on this one? Do I see 210 anywhere? 210. Can I get a 230? 250? 260? 270? Sold for $272,000. Looks like a couple won the bid, so feel free to squabble over which lung you'd prefer. We're into the top two items of the night, ladies and gentlemen, and our corpse is smelling less and less fresh by the minute. Let's get things wrapped up ASAP. Our runner-up highest ticket item is also there because of just how tricky it is to remove and place into a new body. It's a rare one in the organ donation world, and as such, we're charging a real premium for this one. It's not one of the sexiest of organs, but worth its weight in gold. It's the intestines. Bet you didn't see that one coming. These brown snake tunnels are up there as one of the hardest transplants a surgeon can perform. 1959 saw the first successful small intestine transplant, but it was only in a small dog. It wasn't until 1988 that the first successful transplant was done on a human. Rejection rates were through the roof, as well as a really high risk of infection. The breakthrough came from a leap forward in immunosuppressant drugs when cyclosporin came onto the scene in 1972. These drugs help to stop the body's immune system from seeing the new organ as alien and dull their defense response. Another better drug called trocolamus then made this surgery a viable option as opposed to an experimental procedure. But even to this day, intestinal transplants are difficult. So, what's so special about these big guys? Well, if you're Leonardo da Vinci, you probably are thinking that they help with breathing. But you're wrong, Leo. To everyone else, you probably rightly know them as being the exit stages of the digestive system. They squeeze and massage the food mush through themselves with a wave-like motion known as peristalsis. All along the walls of the small intestines are little finger-like structures that sift through the mush. Gross, right? They're called villi. But if you zoom in close, you'll see that those fingers have got their own little fingers called microvilli. And then if you zoom in on them, just kidding, it only goes down to microvilli. These little fingers look through all the food and reabsorb useful things from it. Water, nutrients, vitamins, even good bacteria. But they have a strict zero-tolerance policy for bad bacteria or anything harmful. Like your kidneys, they also help balance out your salt and water levels. If you have too much water in your body, your intestines will secrete some of it into your feces. Not enough, and they'll absorb some of it, same as the salt. So, what happens if they stop working? Well, you're in big trouble. They hold a huge amount of waste products relative to the rest of your body. If something isn't good for you, it often winds up in your intestines ready to be released. That means there's a large concentration of harmful bacteria lurking around. If you get a cut inside your intestines, you run a high risk of getting infected. And given that they're all curled up and knotted deep inside your body, they're not exactly easy to get to and treat. If your intestines get infected and shut down, you'll need to go straight into Total Parenteral Nutrition, or TPN, where all your nutrients are fed straight into your blood supply, cutting out the middleman of your digestive system. 
but of course that middleman is there for a reason. To perform TPN, you need to find a very large vein. There are only six veins big enough in the body. The worst part? Each vein will steadily be damaged over time, so you have to switch. Once you use up the last available vein, you're out of luck. So, you need some new intestines. Well, this is where it gets tricky. They need to be transplanted almost immediately after the death of the donor. Leave them for even a few hours, and they're no longer viable. The best that can be done is cooling them, but this will only extend their lifespan to about 5 hours, after which they'll be unusable. So, I hope you understand, ladies and gentlemen, that these little bits of tubing are coming at a real premium. Probably would have made sense to sell them off first, but then we'd have to restructure the whole auction and you'd lose the anticipation of finding out their price. With that in mind, let's do a quick round of bidding here. How about a cool 800k? We know, we know it's a big markup from the previous few, but there are logistics to consider here, people. And it looks like we're sold to the gentleman in the… <laughs> oh, smells like they might have already gone off. Too bad. No refunds, I'm afraid. This brings us to our most important and pricey organ of the night. And just before we set the price, we've been hearing a few grumbles from the audience here about our pricing model, so we wanted to explain a little. The black market is not only very fickle, but it's also incredibly secretive, for obvious reasons. You just can't search for how much does X organ go for on eBay and expect to find an answer. Well, actually, maybe you can. In 2013 in the state of Indiana, a man was arrested for selling jars of real-life human brains on eBay. He had 60 brains total and was selling sets of six for just 600 bucks plus shipping. So if anyone's looking for a bargain tonight, you can find him out back. Not really, he was arrested at a Dairy Queen. For those morbidly curious, no, he wasn't harvesting the brains himself from Dairy Queen. He was swiping the jars from a museum. In contrast, the most expensive brain in the world would likely be Albert Einstein's, as 46 slides of it were sold to the Mütter Museum for probably a good deal more than that. So, what's our point here? Prices vary wildly. Peter Scharf, a German filmmaker, met a couple of men in a Moldovan village who had sold their kidneys. Earlier, we told you that kidneys go for $200,000. These men were each paid just $2,292 for theirs. On the black market, middlemen take enormous profits, often harvesting organs from people in extreme poverty or victims of human trafficking, sometimes without consent. The crimes they commit are complex, and the risks are huge, and as a result, their prices surge massively. 17 people die each year while waiting for organs. A new person is added to the waiting list every 9 minutes, and yet only 3 in every 1,000 people who die are in a position to actually have their organs harvested. The reason the black market exists is that the supply of organs has always fallen well short of the demand, and when your life is on the line, you get desperate. One in ten organ transplants performed are done through the black market. It's an enterprise worth over a billion dollars annually, with 10,000 kidney transplants a year. How do you fancy your chances of rejecting one of those? Back to the auction in our big ticket organ. It's a crowd favorite, and we had a feeling if you all left tonight without hearing it mentioned at least once, you'd be a little disheartened. Here it is, in all of its pulsating glory, the center of the human body, the heart. What's the number one killer in the US? That's right, heart disease. And before the rest of the world gets too smug, it's not just the US. Before COVID-19, heart disease had been the leading cause of death globally for 30 years straight. Every one and a half seconds, somebody dies from heart disease. That's one in three deaths globally each year. The worst part? It's been rising and is predicted to continue to rise. Sedentary lifestyles, ultra-processed diets, high cholesterol, and all the trappings of the 21st century office life in the developed world contribute to this number getting steadily bigger and bigger. I can see it in your eyes. Everyone in this room is hungry for it. You all want a new heart, don't you? The surgery isn't easy either. We fit a pump that will temporarily take over the job of your heart and lungs while we stop your heart and replace it. Or we do an off-pump procedure and you just go straight into trying to replace it while it's still beating. You're all desperate for one. Your sick old hearts are hammering out of your chests. Can I get 1 million? 1.2? 1.4? 1.5? Sold for 1.6 million dollars. That's the standard going rate for a heart transplant in the United States of America. If you want the most expensive organ in the world, that's where you'll find it. But rest assured, we're running a nice off the books kind of operation out here, and this is the organ on the black market where you'll find the heftiest discount. Tell you what, I'll let you all fight over this one. Whoever's left standing at the end gets first dibs on harvesting any of the bodies. Let the games begin. Now check out how much is an entire human body worth, or watch this video instead.